Good evening, you're watching Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shom. The big story we are tracking, unusual weather patterns in the third major rain-related tragedy in less than 24 hours in Himachal Pradesh. Flash floods have swept through the state. At least 50 people are dead. Chief Minister Sukhu has shared a video clip that you'll see here of a village in the Mandi district saying active rescue search and relief operations are currently in progress. It is a dreadful situation. Extensive rainfall, very heavy flooding, countless people washed away. The death toll, at least 50 at this stage. And this is the third time that we are seeing this in Himachal Pradesh in just the last couple of months. But let's talk about Uttarakhand, where there's been very heavy rainfall in parts as well. On this program, extreme weather events in India and the possibility that global warming, climate change is linked to what is taking place. What does this all mean for us? Is this now a threat that we cannot look away from? Also on the program, ahead of Independence Day tomorrow, several US congressmen are here across party lines, an important sign of the relationship between India and the US. We'll be joined by a very special guest, Congressman Sri Thanedar, later on on this program. But first, let's bring you an update on the situation in Himachal Pradesh and in Uttarakhand. Multiple deaths and devastation all over Himachal Pradesh in the last 48 hours after incessant rains triggered cloud bursts, building collapses and landslides. Seven people died in the Mandi district after being swept away in a flash flood. Dramatic visuals tweeted by the Himachal Chief Minister showed water gushing downhill with great force. Earlier this morning, nine people were killed after a prominent temple in Shimla collapsed after a landslide. More than 700 roads have been closed in the state due to landslides triggered by incessant rain, including a key stretch of the national highway connecting Shimla and Chandigarh. 24 hours, ये आंकड़ा और बढ़ सकता है क्योंकि अभी जो 20 आदमी दबे हुए हैं मैंने अपने सांस्कृतिक कार्यक्रम सारे रद्द कर दिए और कोई भी सांस्कृतिक कार्यक्रम का आयोजन नहीं किया जाएगा द सिचुएशन इज इक्वली बैड इन नेबरिंग उत्तराखंड दिस ड्रामेटिक वीडियो शोस द बिल्डिंग ऑफ द टून डिफेंस कॉलेज इन देहरादून माल देवता कोलैप्सिंग आफ्टर बीइंग वॉश्ड अवे बाय स्ट्रांग करंट्स ऑफ द रिवर बंदल which was overflowing after continuous rainfall. सामने सोम नदी आप देख सकते हैं किस तरह से उफान पर है सामने वो रिसॉर्ट की जो दीवार है उनको नदी ने उनको तोड़ा और ऊपरी इलाकों में कितनी जबरदस्त बारिश हुई है जिसकी वजह से निचले इलाकों में नदियां बाढ़ जैसी स्थिति हो गई है रोड टूट गए कहीं पे रोड नहीं है बच्चों की बस जाती थी वो भी बंद होगी कहीं पे भी नहीं है जगह ना आने का ना जाने का कहीं भी the Met Department in Uttarakhand has issued a red alert for heavy rains in six districts including Dehradun and Nanital. The hill state has been severely affected by the continuous monsoon rain which has caused 60 deaths so far. Additionally, at least 17 people are missing. With Kishore Rawat in Uttarakhand, Bureau Report, NDTV. Well, the report over there gives you an idea of how desperate the situation in Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh particularly has been. It is important because we see climate change all around us and the link between extreme weather events like what you saw over there and climate change are perhaps more easily to identify than a few years back when people were reticent. The reason we say so is because there are extreme weather events all around the world. Let's just consider this. This is a new study it looks at the month of July alone. In July, a couple of months back, just last month in fact, there have been 23 consecutive days of global temperatures above the previous record. The hottest ever ocean waters have been recorded in one location, in the ocean waters 
out uh, of the coast of Florida in the U.S. The hottest night ever recorded globally has been registered at Death Valley, USA at 48.9 degrees centigrade. That's night temperature. At 52.2 degrees centigrade, China recorded its hottest day, also the hottest recorded temperature above 43 degrees north latitude. There is record low Antarctic sea ice recorded for the month of July. That is seen to be a 1 in 13 billion year event. And now for the third consecutive time, we see these floods, excessive rainfall in the state of Himachal Pradesh. What's this all about? That's what we are looking at. Joining us now, Anjal Prakash, author in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the UN body for assessing science related to climate change. We're also joined by Dr. Akshay Deoras, Professor Krishna Chutha Rao, and R.K. Jenamani, the head of weather services at the Med Department. Uh, Anjal Prakash, when you look at uh, the trends in the Himalayas this year alone, in the state of Himachal Pradesh, three major episodes in just the last couple of months, is there a link to climate change? No, absolutely there's a link to climate change. And this is you know, very clear by the recent IPCC report, which is published uh, in the beginning of the year. See, uh, if you would have asked me this question uh, 15 years before, 10 years before, I would have said that the science is still not clear. But at this moment, as we are speaking to you, science is absolutely clear that these uh, extreme events are led by climate change. Now, a couple of points to be noted here. If you see in India and if you look at the July record itself, we all together, India has about 13 percent higher rainfall than what we uh, have usually got it. So it is we are going towards a wetter future. The drier areas are going to be much more drier and the wetter area is going to be much more wetter. But it also means that the distribution of rainfall will be very scanty as we have seen the images from Himachal and um, uh, Uttarakhand and uh, all other, um, you know, uh, regions, especially the Himalayan regions are very, very sensitive to these areas. And this is the havoc that has been created there. Dr. Dioras, what is the evidence or the, the data we now possess, which we perhaps didn't possess 15 years ago, which makes us now be confident that these are climate related events. You're asking well, me? Our... Dr. Dioras, go ahead. Dr. Akshay Dioras. Observations have improved. So compared to last, say, 50 or 60 years, we are now very sure about our records, be it over India or different parts of the globe. And uh, just like what you were mentioning a couple of minutes ago, July itself was really historic. And I would say that we have reached the unfortunate milestone of witnessing the hottest ever month on record. So we are now more certain about observations. And given the fact that uh, you know globally we are seeing extreme events. So one thing we need to know that you know extreme weather events keep on happening all the time. It's nothing new. But what is concerning is the absolute link between them and climate change. And we have just seen that for heat waves in various parts of the globe in the last month. So that's, that's the obvious concern. Professor Krishna Achuta Rao, is there a fear that going forward with uh, global warming, with climate change taking place at the pace at it, at, that it is, there's a worry that these extreme events may be more common and more severe? Absolutely. I think there is no doubt that going forward, as the global mean temperature increases, it's just putting more energy into the system. And that means there's going to be more heat waves, more tropical cyclones, more such extreme weather, uh, 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 rainfall events. Because, you know, as you warm the planet, you're, you're just increasing the amount of water vapor that the air can hold. And if it comes down to a rain, that extra water vapor is going to rain down on you. So this is all very consistent. And we've shown through multiple studies and the IPCC has shown that as you go forward, not only is the frequency of these events going to increase, the intensity of these events is also going to increase. And in the case of heat waves, in a recent paper, we have shown that the duration of heat waves is also going to increase. So there's just no scenario going forward where you can increase global temperatures and have things stay uh, calm or, or as, as uh, quiescent as they are now. It's going to get worse. There Professor is no Rao, let me that. just ask you a very basic question. Assuming temperatures actually come down around the world, if we are able to meet our climate change goals, just assuming we know where we are, would there automatically be a reversal to these trends? Well, let me uh, correct one thing. 
if we stop emitting all the greenhouse gases that are causing climate change, our temperature is not going to come down immediately. I it's see. going to take some time before the temperature responds to what we have done. So what we have right now, even if we stop emitting all of the greenhouse gases, it's going to be a while before our temperatures come down. And if temperatures come down, extreme events will naturally and come down. And by while, what do you mean? It depends. You know, there are ways in which the gre these greenhouse gases that we put into the air are taken up. So the natural processes that take them up have to kick in. They have to slowly deplete the atmosphere of carbon dioxide and other things. And that is a process that uh, we know some, but we don't know enough to say confidently that within so many years, things will start improving. This is a long-term lock-in of temperatures that we have. Mr. Jainamani, um, you know, if you look at the Himalayan states, like Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, other states incredibly vulnerable. Uh, how would you assess the events in Himachal Pradesh over the last few months? In fact, over the last few weeks. Yeah, actually, the Himachal, we have the major uh, rain spell uh, and we have a 8 to 13 July. In fact, that was uh, uh, over these areas covering the Mandi and then Solan and coming up to Chandigarh and then further to Haryana and Rishikesh. So that was from 8 to 13 July and uh, we have seen how the record breaking rain it was and uh, it was, uh, you know, severe. And now uh, in between we have heavy rainfall and very heavy rainfall both over Himachal and Uttarakhand. But uh, this event yesterday again, uh, as, you, as we have the data actually like Rishikesh going up to 420 millimeter in 24 hour is exceptional heavy. I mean, this is a record breaking rain and another uh, we got like uh, 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 stations like Shimla also 140 millimeter over the airport in 24 hours and also we have the something like Kangra reporting 270 millimeter. So these are some second highest or uh, ever highest. So getting a second spell over the same area is something uh, uh, impacting actually and uh, I must tell that all the rainfall uh, when we analyze it all observed in the night actually. So up to evening 7 p.m. yesterday the rain was just uh, 20 millimeter some stations but most of the rainfall was from the midnight to today morning and uh, and that uh, we have seen how the flash flood and uh, landslide and particularly the Simla is most affected and Mandi also and uh, Rishikesh and uh, Dehradun and even up to Masuri also we have a very high rainfall belt. But, uh, but today the scenario uh, better till now but the rain has increased Himachal. We have the data till 8.30 p.m. and we have Shimla also already 50 millimeter. So there will be definitely, we have given the red color and uh, we want everybody to uh, you know, keep uh, maximum safety to, tonight also. So, so that is all, uh, all the uh, update and real time. But surely as uh, it has been uh, by other experts, I agree that uh, uh, there are, uh, you know, the extreme weather events, their numbers have been increasing, whether you take the uh, number of heavy rainfall uh, events, uh, they have increased almost 75% uh, in last uh, 40 to 50 years, uh, and also the number of uh, heat wave days, some, something like that. So, so yeah, the impact has been there. The and, uh, the yeah, have but, uh, but as yesterday well. even towards, yeah. The emergence of cyclones have increased as well. Yeah, actually cyclone, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but, uh, but as you know that North Indian Ocean, the frequency are very, very low. Some, uh, something, you know, not uh, that straight actually reply. But, but I can tell that heavy rainfall events, numbers and heat wave days, they have increased here. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Anjil yeah. Prakash, yeah. 420 millimeters of rainfall yeah. in Rishikesh in a period of 24 hours. I mean, how bizarre is that? Absolutely. See, you know, this I, I'm now, you know, when the journalist asked me, I, I used to say earlier that it is unprecedented, but even that word now has been so uh, commonly used. So these, uh, you know, every year and every uh, other month, I have to be telling that this is unprecedented because it never happened. And what we are doing is that we are breaking our own records. 
earlier is to be in couple of years and now it's been always in one year itself we have two three times that we've seen that the earlier record has been broken and that shows that the climate emergency is here one more point i would like to put forward vishnu is about the action you know this is this, this is the well known uh, knowledge that all of us know that these are climate event and this is going to happen and it's going to be increasing day in and day out but what are we doing about it is a question and that is what where i think our response has been appalling that we are not taking the pre uh, you know the measures which should have been before um, the disaster strikes us so it is not the ndrf uh, you know a job um, to fix the problem we have to fix the problem beforehand and this that is the on on the point that i would like to uh, put forward two points here one is about uh, what we are doing globally so we are definitely you know raising the voice of the global south all these issues will remain and it will take a longer time but what we need to do here is is something which is very uh, uh, early that we have to take this into account one is about the uh, climate resilient infrastructure our infrastructure is not tuned towards it the second part is about communication as the imd is telling us we could have known this about uh, you know a week or 10 days in advance and we could have done some measures to um, to uh, combat these issues because i think the rainfall uh, modelings are much more advanced that we should have known this information much before that we are not caught unaware there are many many things that we can do which is in our hand with uh, which we must do and that is what i would put forward here um Let me just go back to uh, Dr. Dioras. I think one of the most frightening realities in all of this is that um, people in areas near rivers are the most vulnerable. Given the quality of construction in many of these areas, uh, in river valleys, uh, you know, I mean, we'll see villages, homes being washed out with regular frequency at this rate. that is true and uh, see i'm not an expert about uh, construction activities and so on but what i can tell you for sure is that whenever anything like this happens the first impact is obviously on people living near rivers and this is not something that is happening this year it has been happening since several years and the most important point now is that we need to really start you know taking some actions on this because taking actions take a lot of time and we are just running out of time because even if this whole thing has got links with climate change and it has to do with the whole monsoon pattern itself but we are very sure that in the future the frequency of such events is going to go up so we don't have time and before time runs out we need to have a very comprehensive plan that such things could be avoided in the future all right well it is frightening indeed i'd like to thank you all very much uh, for joining us and you know sharing your concern on what is uh, and uh, series of events which just keep repeating themselves now and the link to climate change appears quite clear we're going to move on now ahead of independence day tomorrow several us congressmen are here across party lines an important sign of the relationship between india and the us we're joined by a very special guest congressman street hanidar uh, on this program thanks congressman very much uh, for being with us uh, you know you you're part of a bipartisan delegation of us congressmen what is the significance and message that you want to send by attending india's independence day celebrations well first of all being the representing the oldest democracy as a united states uh, representative uh, from the state of michigan so i'm like a khasdar in uh, united states congress or lok sabha obviously uh, we respect india we respect india because it is the largest democracy in the world and india has made a remarkable progress over the last uh, 75 years and i'm here at the invitation of Uh, prime minister modi ji when he came to the united states i had the distinct pleasure to escort him to the joint session of the parliament joint session of congress we call it and mr modi ji and i had a long conversation one on one conversation where we talked about uh, bilateral relations and we also talked about uh, the misconceptions in Uh, there are in the united states congress and part of the reason the delegation is here i have with me about six other congress members and uh, it Mo- modi ji felt it was important that congress members come to india 
get to know the country, get to know its people, get to know its culture, and how people are living in harmony. People mm -hmm. with different culture, different religion, different language, different food. And uh, so part of the purpose is not only to be at Red Fort, watch the historic ceremony, watch and listen to Modiji's speech, uh, congratulate India on its spectacular achievement and also work towards building stronger relationship. Now the India-US relationship is multidimensional and the joint statement of the US uh, when the Prime Minister was there focused on everything from, uh, from high tech to so many other uh, areas. Um, and that I think is one of the, the, the best things about the relationship. Could you share uh, a few more details about that? Prime Minister Modi ji and President Biden, Biden have built a very strong friendship, a very strong personal friendship. And that will go a long way in developing very strong relationships. You know, mm -hmm. I, I lived in India first 24 years of my life. I lived in poverty. I, I decided to go to U.S. Uh, to study and help my family lift out of poverty. And I've been in the United States uh, ever since, got an education, started a small business that grew uh, technology business, got a PhD in chemistry. So I'm a chemist by training, ran small businesses for many years and then decided that I achieved my American dream. But uh, America has given me so much and I wanted to give back. And that's the reason I entered into politics. Uh, became an MLA, a state representative in Michigan, then now a Khasdar or MP or what we call U.S. congressman. Uh, so I'm deeply interested in seeing a strong relationship. Look, the non-alignment uh, that India has practiced for decades, uh, now with U.S. being the only superpower, time has come now to look at U.S. India relationship and we need to go beyond the nice days. We need to go beyond the relationship that we have enjoyed over the last uh, several decades as the largest and the oldest democracy. The time has now come to build a much stronger trusting relationship. Uh, almost a time to rethink the non-alignment policy and built and have a trust in the United States. I believe that if these two great countries can come together and truly form friendship, we can do so much in defense, in space technology, in medicine. You know, that's what, where we need to go. Do you believe the deepening relationship between India and the United States is premised upon a shared concern over China? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, China is a growing uh, factor of concern. Uh, China has become militarily aggressive uh, with its drone technology. Uh, Iran has become a major source of trouble, terrorism, uh, uh, state-sponsored terrorism uh, is uh, that Iran practices. and. Uh, how close Iran is to acquiring a nuclear bomb and it would be very destabilizing and it would be in the best interest, national security interest of the United States that we stop the aggression of China. Sure. We stop the aggression of Iran and we stop the aggression of Russia. We have seen what Russia can do to a sovereign nation like Ukraine. And so if India, United States, and perhaps Israel, Israel is also um, a powerful defense technology. There is an innovation culture, there is a entrepreneurial culture in Israel. I just spent a week in Israel visiting uh, various sites and their defense capabilities are outstanding. Uh, so if United States, Israel and India 
can form the strong bond, these three democracies, against the terrorism of Iran, against the military aggression of China, and against uh, the Russian ambition and uh, uh, encroachment into the sovereign countries like Ukraine. We need together, we need to fight this, and the democratic forces need to align. A final question to you, sir. What are your key focus areas during this visit? Not only we want to participate uh, into the celebration of the 75th anniversary, uh, we uh, intend to meet uh, with the Prime Minister, uh, we intend to meet uh, with the President uh, of India, and we'll be meeting with several uh, cabinet ministers to continue our collaboration in space, in cyber technology, in mobility. Uh, I represent Michigan and Detroit. Detroit is a world center of automotive technology. And I'm looking to see how, uh, as there's a lot of changes happening in the automotive technology, uh, in terms of mobility, in terms of electric batteries, and how India and the United States and India and my state of Michigan can collaborate to benefit both these nations and create jobs in America, create economic growth in America. So there is a lot that we can do together and um, I as a business person, I as someone who has lived his life in India for the first 24 years, I am deeply interested and uh, uh, Mr. Modi, when he came to the joint session of Congress, he, uh, what we call in America, hit out of the park. He, he was spectacular and he was very well received by the United States Congress and the great relationship that he enjoys with the White House. Uh, there is a lot of good things that can happen and I'm all for uh, improving uh, this uh, great relationship between these two great democracies. Well, it's time now for us to take a, a short break. Thank you, sir, and uh, a very happy visit to India. It is our Independence Day. We feel honored Thanks that you're so going to be present. Me. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for, for coming to our country. We'll take a short break, come back with a lot more. <laughs>